Hello, thank you very much for joining us today. I'm very excited to have Nancy with me um, to talk about some of her amazing book series uh, and what she's been up to in these last little months. So first, I'm just going to start off with a brief introdu introduction. Um, so we're very excited to have Nancy on with us today. Her How I Survived Middle School series is one of my absolute favorites. Um, she was born in Brooklyn, New York and grew up in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Uh, she went to Temple University in Philadelphia and majored in investigative reporting and journalism, hoping to one day become a news reporter. Um, she's now the author of more than 200 books for children and young adults, including three New York Times bestsellers. She's best known, however, for being the author and creator of the Katie Kazoo Switcheroo, George Brown Class Clown, How I Survived Middle School, and the Magic Bone book series. Um, so thank you so much for being with us tonight, Hi. Nancy. Hi, everybody. Happy quarantine. <laughs> um, I am Nancy Krillick, and I do write uh, mostly chapter books. I don't know if any of you know my Katie Kazoo series, or maybe you've burped along with George Brown. Uh, lately, I've been working on the Princess Pulverizer series, um, and I've... I've been taking this time to do an awful lot of writing. Now, usually I get my ideas from people I talk to and places I go. Unfortunately, there's no one to talk to except the dog and I can't go anywhere. So you might be asking yourself, well, how are you getting ideas? And what I've been doing is walking around the house looking for things that give me an idea on what to write about. And just the other day, I found a photograph of myself when my family took a trip to Transylvania, Romania. I was 14 years old, and we took a tour of Dracula's castle, which was extremely exciting. And I have a picture of me popping out of a coffin in the middle of, of the castle. And that gave me a great idea, and I started writing a story that's about vampires in Transylvania. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. And it's funny and scary and exciting. And um, I think it's probably going to be published a year from now. Because usually what happens, it takes a full year for a book that I'm working on to go from my original outline to when it hits stores. So I would say in about a year, you should be able to find a story about Dracula's castle by me. So that's where I am right now. I think that this is a great time for us to be as creative as possible. Um, and since we can't go out into the real world, it's a great time to create your own imaginary world. It's kind of fun to create an imaginary world because in that world, all the good guys win. You have total control over what everybody does. And that makes it really exciting. I know in my case, when I create fictional worlds, the kids in my books do exactly what I tell them to do. Whereas my own kids have never once done exactly what I tell them. <laughs> so that's what I've been up to now. And uh, if you have any questions for me, I'm here. Yes, yeah, so please put any questions you have um, in the chat box and I'll see them and I can pass them on to Nancy. Um, your vampire story sounds amazing. I'm very excited for that to come out. Um, so while I'm waiting for a couple questions from everyone, I did get some staff questions. So I'll start with one of those. Okay. Um, and one of our staff members really wanted to know what is your favorite series to write? Um, and what was your favorite series to create? Oh my gosh, it's like asking a mom, who's your favorite kid? <laughs> um, I actually, I would say the series that's nearest and dearest to my heart is probably Katie Kazoo. It's to this day, my biggest selling series worldwide, um, although How I Survived Middle School is for some reason very popular in Europe and uh, mm -hmm. Asia, so I don't know why, but it is. Um, but Katie Kazoo was the series that started it all for me, and um, so Katie is very near and dear to my heart. But the Princess Pulverizer series, which was... Um, about a girl who defied stereotypes and didn't want to be a sweet little princess. She wanted to be a knight. And the fact that she went out on a quest of kindness to do eight good deeds, um, for me, that was a lot of fun to write, but it was also very purposeful. And I don't usually write purposeful. So that was exciting for me. 
That's really cool. I do love the prince, princess pulverizer. Yeah, I mean, the art on that is just, it's just wonderful. All right, so let me see here. So we do have a question. Um, oh, so what was your very first published book? My very first published book was uh, a nonfiction picture book hmm. and it was called Real Robots. And it was about robots that helped out in factories and helped with the police department and the fire department, helped the disabled. Um, but that book is out of print now. So I guess the only way you'd be able to get it is at a library or um, at a used bookstore somewhere. Uh, but that was my very first book and I published it. I was out of college about a year. I was working at Scholastic and the book clubs asked me if I would do a nonfiction book based on an article that I had written about real robots. So that was the start. That's really cool. Have you uh, written any other nonfiction? For a long, long time, I did um, a lot of celebrity biographies. Mm -hmm. I did, you know, everyone from Left Eye Lopez to Leonardo DiCaprio. That was a huge seller because it came out the same week as um, Titanic. Um, and I did about 10 or 15 of those celebrity bios. They did very well. And no, I've never met any of them. <laughs> never met any of the celebrities, but I did a tremendous amount of research. Um, I spoke to people who knew the celebrities, had worked with the celebrities, but it's very hard to get near the celebrities themselves. That's really cool. It would have been amazing if you got to talk to you know, Leonardo DiCaprio. I actually got to interview celebrities where it's uh, uh, Vanilla Ice and MC, MC Hammer and Vanilla Ice, the hip hop never stops. It was a lot of years ago. A lot of years ago. <laughs> That's, I love that. It's great. Um, so we have another question. What is your favorite book? And do you have a list of favorite books or authors? To read. Uh, yeah. well, my favorite authors are... Uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway. Mm. And I try to read one book by each of them uh, every other month or so, just to bring my ego back in check, because uh, that's real writing. Um, I, I'm trying to think, when I was a kid, I loved the All of the Kind Family series. Mm. I loved Nancy Drew. I loved Hardy Boys. Um, I love Dr. Seuss. And to this day, we still have the full collection of Dr. Seuss in my son's room even though he's like in his 20s and has moved to California. But uh, every now and then I'll pull down Ural the Turtle or something because I just think the rhythm of the language and the playfulness, it's fun. Mm -hmm. Very fun books to read. Um, my parents have um, all of the original Nancy Drew in Hardy Boys. So that's um, what I grew up on as well. Yeah, they're awesome. They're great. So awesome, although I still don't know what that car was that she was driving. I've never seen one. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay, so we have another question. Do you have a favorite character to write for? Um, I loved writing Princess Pulverizer because she's got an edge and she's na the, the nasty characters are the most fun to write. Um, often the bad guys like Louie in the George Brown Class Clown series. George is fun to write because he burps a lot and he gets in trouble, but Louie is nasty. So it's really kind of fun to write him and then have him get his in the end. That's what I was saying about writing fiction is that the bad guys in my books never win. And I wish the world was like that, you know, but it is in the world that I create. So for a couple of hours of every day while I'm writing, the world's a pretty amazing place. I love the George Brown series. It always makes me laugh out loud so much. And we actually used one of the photos from the George Brown um, series as our promotion for this, oh. which I think got a lot more people excited. Um, well, if kids want to send me their burps, uh, they can email me through my website, realnancykrulik.com. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll write you back if you'd like to send me video of your burps. Um, and if you can give me permission to post them, let me know. I get them all the time. That's amazing. If you do get any, you'll have to share them with, uh, oh, with the library. <laughs> There's nothing better than a burp. Um, so we have another question. What advice do you have for aspiring young writers? Ah, read. Read, 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 read. The best writers are readers. Mm -hmm. It lets you see how language looks on a page. It lets you feel how language sounds in your head. Um, it gives you an opening to the kinds of things you'd want to write. If you love reading fantasy, maybe you want to read one, reading fantasy, maybe you want to write fantasy. Um, so that's number one. Also, I keep a journal everywhere I go. It, there's, oh, there's a million journals around my house. 
Um, and I'll just write an idea down. Like the idea for Katie Kazoo came in a dream. I had this dream that a girl turned into a hamster. And I happen to have a dream journal. So that before I got out of bed, I just wrote girl into hamster. I don't know what that says about me. But 47 books later, you know, it's fine. Um, one time I went to the hairdresser and this woman came in with this like disaster on her head. And she's like, you have to fix this. It's awful. And I thought, looks like Katie Kazoo cut her hair. And that became Katie Kazoo hair today, gone tomorrow, because I had my journal and I wrote Katie into hairdresser. So if you keep a journal, you may not use that idea for six months mm -hmm. or a year, or you might use it tomorrow, but it's always there because we do tend to forget things, even though we're sure we're going to remember them. How many do you keep all your journals? Um, well, yeah, they, uh, sometimes. I mean, I live in a Manhattan apartment, so I'm kind of limited. So once all the ideas in a journal are gone, usually the journal's gone. Um, but I also tend now, uh, I carry, you know, my iPhone everywhere. So I sometimes will just type it in there. And that saved me a lot of space. Mm, like the notes app? <laughs> Got it. Um, so we have another question. Is there anyone who you would like to work or collaborate with? Hmm. You know, I have never, the only person I've ever collaborated with is my daughter. We did a series called Project Droid uh, with six books. Um, and it was fun, but I did discover that I, um, I can be bossy and I'm not a really good collaborator. Um, but the good thing about my daughter is she knows me very well and she knows not to take my nonsense. And uh, therefore, you pretty much hear more of her than you do of me in those books. Um, so no, I really, I can't think of anybody because I, I'm not fun to work with. I don't think I learned it correctly in kindergarten. Well, it was good at least that you got to test it out with your daughter to make yes, sure. Yes, the books did very well. They're adorable and really funny. So, um, we had a good time. Excellent. Um, so we have another question. Do you have a favorite children's author besides Dr. Seuss? Besides Dr. Seuss. Uh, Judy Bloom. Judy Bloom. Um, I remember reading Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, when I was a kid, and just going, whoa, like these people are just like me. And I think she broke such ground um, and continues to break such ground in Kidlet. Um, she's amazing. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty definite. Yeah. And still, she's still so popular, which is amazing. Her books are always out at the library. <laughs> you know what? She, she was very smart. And if you read those books, you don't find a lot of slang or description of fashion. Um, it, the books are timeless because she, she made sure that they were. They're not mm -hmm. of a time. I think um, preteens feel the emotions that those kids feel to this day. And I think that's what makes her book so special and magical. And it's something mm -hmm. all writers to aspire to. Excellent. Okay, so we have another question. Are any of your characters based on real life? Oh, yes. George Brown. <laughs> My son, Ian, uh, was the class clown. He spent eighth grade in the hall. And I was on speed dial from the headmaster. Um, and he could burp the alphabet. And so when my editor came to me and said, you know, we'd love for you to spin off the George character from Katie Kazoo, is there any way you could make, is there any way you could get a series around him? And I thought, oh yes, yes I can. I have many stories. Um, and so George is based on my son, Ian. Absolutely. Um, so that I would say, but not to the point where there was a magical super burp that caused all kinds of trouble, but. <laughs> There are enough Ians in there that he has consistently asked me for a royalty. And, and does he get a royalty? No. No. <laughs> no. He, he got school and, uh, you know, room and board for many, many years. No. <laughs> and I mean, you have to use those great childhood memories. I mean, I might as well. I hide in the closet or in the bathroom during their play dates and take notes on what they were saying all the time. I now they're grown up, so it's more complicated. But if it, when they were young, oh sure, I stole everything. That's so funny. I, I, I picture Ian trying to be like, oh, my mom's just in the bathroom. She's trying to write what we're saying. Exactly. 
Um, okay, so if you could be best friends with one of your characters, who would it be? Oh, Katie Kazoo. She's the nicest person on the planet. She's the most tolerant person. Also, Jenny in the How I Survived Middle School books, mm. because Jenny, Jenny's like a, a really honestly good person. She's just a little naive. So if I was friendly with her, I might explain to her that maybe the pops were not the direction she would want to go. <laughs> I, I like, you know, um, the main characters in my books are often the nicest, but they're not always the most fun to write. They would be the most fun to be friendly with them. Mm -hmm. um, if you weren't an author, what do you think you'd be doing? Oh, gosh, I have nothing. <laughs> um, it's really the only thing I'm really good at. Um, I, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an actor. I was the world's worst actor. I mean, the worst. Um, but I will say that the acting classes that I took taught me how to get into character. And when you're writing, you really have to be the characters and, and know their life story, even if it's not in the books, very much like an actor would for a character. Um, I, I, I don't know, I've, I tried like teaching classes, I was terrible. I really can't do anything else other than write. So I'm very, very lucky that I've been allowed to do it for this long. I'm also very, very happy that you are the writer. Your series, I honestly, they're my go-to when I go to class visits at the library. I always bring the George Brown Thank series you. to make them laugh. Thank they're you great. So much. Well, I, I only write funny. I sort of don't see any point in writing sad. It's I much more fun to write to, to, to laugh than to cry. And middle school can be such a difficult time for, for some people, right? So it's, it's nicer to have some experiences where books are, are going to make you laugh and smile. A lot of what happens in How I Survived Middle School is taken from things that happened in my life. Um, I remember once we had a sewing class, which I don't think they make girls take anymore, thank goodness. But I sewed this little jumper with a skirt and nobody told me that you have to back stitch to make sure it stays tight. And throughout the day, the skirt was opening as I was wearing it. By the end of the day, it was all put together with safety pin safety pins. It was a couple of years before the punk movement, but I was way ahead of my time. <laughs> you were just bringing it out early. I was, trendsetter. <laughs> How long does it take you uh, from start to finish to write a book? Well, I usually start with an outline and then I do a, um, I do a full manuscript. And then I send that to my editor. And then we go back and forth and back and forth with her making suggestions that aren't really suggestions. She really wants them done. And me making revisions. There's a whole lot of revisions. Um, and usually the time that it takes me from that first outline all the way to the last revision, which can be as many as five full revisions, is about a month. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a new series and a new story and new, new characters that I'm getting to know, like the vampire story, um, that can take two or three months, but usually once the series is going, it takes about a month. And then the illustrator has about four months. And then there's the designer who puts it together. And then the copy editors and everybody checking and checking and checking and checking. We don't want any mistakes in our books. Um, so as I said before, usually what I'm working on now, it will be in stores a year later. But mm -hmm. my particular part of the process is usually about one to three months. And do you have any kind of superstitious that you must do when you're starting a new book or I a new series? I listen to the same um, album all the way through writing a whole book, which makes mm -hmm. my husband insane because he's often home working. And um, so if I'm listening to an album on day one, I will be listening to that album on a loop for one full month while I'm writing. And it just depends. You know, this month it happens to be the Rolling Stones, but next month it could be Neil Young. I don't know. You know, it's, it, that's, I, maybe it's a superstition or maybe because it just becomes background. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but that's something that I do. When you're finished the book, do you, are you like, okay, I can't listen to this album anymore? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then I move on to the next one. So That's a very cool process. All right, so we have another question. So what do you like to do when you're not writing? When I'm not writing and I'm not in quarantine, um, I love to go to rock concerts. I'm big mm -hmm. on rock concerts. I love to go to the gym. I like to run around Central Park with the dog. Um, I love to go out to restaurants. I like to go to the theater. 
and you know basically can't do anything but take the dog out now but i will new york will come back and i will be there dogs are very happy right now <laughs> they are um so we have another question what are your thoughts on self-publishing versus using a publishing company well there are benefits to have to both certainly with self-publishing you don't have to worry about being rejected by an editor um, and if you're going to self-publish, I would suggest hiring an editor because very often what you write makes perfect sense to you, but when you take it out of your brain, somebody else reads it and either may not understand, may have a suggestion about places where you might want to build or reduce. I mean, I think we've all read books where it took you a hundred pages to get into the story and you think, where's the editor? So I would definitely hire an editor. Um, the benefits of having a publishing company are many. They have the marketing, marketing and publicity in place. Um, you have the editor in place. You have access to the best illustrators. You have, you know, so all of that, you know, while you may, the pro and, and they have the distribution, you know. So when this is all over and we're all back at our independent bookstores and, and our libraries, um, I, I prefer working with, um, with a regular publisher, but not everybody gets their books published that way. Um, and not everybody wants to relinquish that much control. I'm not that much. I, I have enough control over the universe I'm writing. I'm happy to let somebody else control the rest of it. And do you get um, to choose the illustrator on your books? Never, never. Um, it's not my talent. I don't know which style. I mean, sometimes um, editors will run them by me and say, do you have a preference? Is there someone you really love? Um, but, you know, I don't even get to say what scenes are illustrated. Hmm. I'm given a lot of freedom to write what I want to write. And the illustrators are likewise professionals. So I give them sort of the same freedom. And it always works really well. You, yeah, you wouldn't I, know that it's kind of like a separate process. I haven't even met many of them. Mm. I'm learning so many. New yeah, things all over the world. I've had illustrators in, like the illustrator for George Brown, Aaron, lives in London or outside of London. And, and um, Princess Pulverizer's illustrator, Ben, lives in, in LA. I mean, I don't meet them. I don't even, you know, Zoom or Skype with them. It's mm -hmm. just... It's remote. That's the new word, right? Remote. Yes. <laughs> so I know you mentioned the um, vampire book. Is there anything else that you are working on? Um, I have a couple of other ideas that are floating around, but I'm waiting on contracts. So I'm not going to really talk about them right now, but I'll be happy to talk about them another time. Um, but until a contract is signed, I don't want to bring anything up. No problem. We are very excited about the vampire um, book. All right, let me I'll just let you know after, after all this what's going on, what that's all about. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> that would be great. Oh, we have a funny question. Um, what is your least favorite vegetable? Least, oh, uh, Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Not like feet. I don't know how you can get them near their mouth. Mm. That's so funny. All right. So I'm just reading the chat. All right, I think we have answered all the questions everyone's brought in. Um, if anyone has any last minute questions, please bring them in now. Um, thank you so much, Nancy. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's been great talking with you. Um, and while I just give a last minute chance for more questions, I do just want to mention our summer reading club. Um, it is now, our site is now live. It's been moved to an online platform um, called Beanstack. If you go to our website, nflibrary.ca, um, you can register. Um, you'll be able to register to complete activities and earn virtual badges all summer long. And we also have a community goal this summer. Um, so we're asking Niagara Falls residents to read 1 million minutes, which may seem like a lot, but I think if we all um, do it together, it will be a really fun challenge. Um, and we're really excited to bring the community together with this. Um, and you can absolutely check out all of Nancy's books in our collection um, by placing holds now and picking them up through curbside pickup 
or by visiting Hoopla, uh, which is an online platform that we have um, Nancy's books, eBooks and e-audiobooks. Awesome. All right. Oh, I have one more question coming in. Um, do you have a favorite movie? Favorite movie. Well, I probably should say Titanic, right? Um, no, I, I um, love these old, old, old black and white movies. So um, there's uh, a, a group of brothers that you, known as the Marx Brothers. And they did, they were like from way before my time even, but they did very funny slapstick humor. I love slapstick humor. I love to write slapstick humor. I often say that it's the Marx Brothers movies that were my greatest teacher teachers because um, I, I, I aspire to their hilarity. Mm -hmm. So if you get a chance to check out something like Animal Crackers or Duck Soup starring the Marx Brothers, particularly Groucho, um, I'd say go for it. They have, I've been watching them through this whole quarantine nonstop. They have pulled me through. In the darkest times, they have made me laugh hysterically. So I recommend them. And I'm sure the library has them hidden somewhere. Oh, I'm sure, yes. Um, is there anything that you would recommend if uh, people love your book series and they've read them all up? Is there anything that they could binge watch or, or watch that's kind of similar that you think uh, reminds you of some of your, your books? Well, I mean, Katie Kazoo is about switcheroo, so go watch the Freaky Friday movies, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't know of any burping shows, necessarily. Um, so, I mean, I don't, I don't know, but I, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. Um, okay, oh, we have another question. If you okay. could jump into a pool full of something, what would it be? A pool full of mint chocolate chip ice cream. Yeah. That's my favorite ice cream flavor. Yeah, that's the good stuff. And it will be very refreshing. I think so, in this heat, for sure. Excellent. Okay, so that was our last gin. I don't know if there's anything um, that you wanted to mention that you haven't yet. Uh, just that you guys can contact me through my website, and I always respond when you contact through my website. I'm not nearly as good with handwritten notes, but I'm real good about answering um, emails that come through the website. So right away. And please send me your burps. Do you get a lot of burp burps? Uh, emails or videos? Uh, I have gotten my share of recorded burp emails. Yes, yes, I have. Um, I won't post them unless you give me permission to because I don't post kids' pictures unless I have permission. Um, but yeah, or you can ask me a question there and I'm more than happy to answer. So, you know, you can always contact me through the contact page on the, uh, on the website. Has anyone come up to you in person before and wanted right. to show you their coolest burp? burp? Yes, 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 they have. Um, uh, it's, it's very, and sometimes I'll go to schools and I'll ask the whole school to just burp once and get it out of their system so we can move on. Mostly they scream, burp, but every now and then there's one kid that goes deep into his gut and really lets it out. So my, and so that's, that's always amusing. That's it, honestly, it's a great legacy to have, you know, I think so. I no think matter so. what I people coming up. This pulverizer series also is fond of burping. Yeah. I tend to throw burps into a lot of my books. I mean, everyone burps, so. I think so. <laughs> the louder the better. Yes. And if you can burp the alphabet like my son, go crazy. I cannot. I can't That's a very impressive feat. It's a lot of letters. I think so. I, I think he should have been given an award for it, but the school didn't agree. But, I mean, it turned into a book series, so. It did. It did. <laughs> Excellent. Got him where he needed to go. Well, thank you so much, Nancy. Thank you uh, it was great me. chatting with you. Thank you for mm -hmm. having me. All right, I hope everybody you have a stay good. safe, please. Yes. Have a good evening. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening today. Good night.